Here we are on launch morning, and uh, although we launched in daybreak when we went out to the pad, it was at night. And what you're looking at there with the shuttle stack sitting there, lit up by the xenons, is truly an awe-inspiring sight. The, uh, everybody's very happy and ready to go. We've been training for nine months, and we're ready for this moment. The uh, spectators got quite a view because it was a gorgeous sunrise, we understand, that we launched right after. The main engine's light, six seconds later, there's no doubt in your mind that you're going somewhere when the uh, solid rockets light. The, uh, it's a great feeling. It's a fairly rough ride for the first couple minutes while the solids are burning. The, we do a roll program to insert ourselves into the proper plane of inclination. And then we're monitoring the systems. You see this shadow through the clouds, which again, I guess, gave the spectators a pretty fabulous view as the uh, shadow from our plume uh, went across there from the sun. The, uh, what's amazing at this point are the solid rockets are burning fuel at the rate of six tons per second each. So that's a tremendous amount of thrust. And there's no doubt in your mind that you are going somewhere with that thrust. After a couple of minutes, the solids burn out. They detach, and uh, they parachute back down into the Atlantic where they're retrieved, towed back in by some ships that NASA has out there, and they're refurbished. This gives you an idea what uh, 17,000 miles an hour looks like. That was the external fuel tank. As soon as we're on orbit, we open the payload bay doors for cooling. That's another major milestone. If they don't open, we can't stay and have to come back. A brief introduction. There's myself, the uh, commander, the pilot, Rick Husband. I might add he is up in my commander seat. Here's Tammy Jernigan, MS-1, catching a bite on the fly through the International Space Station. Ellen Ochoa, MS-2, is back in Space Hab where she spent a lot of time where the uh, couple tons of stuff we hauled up was. Dan Barry, there's that smile on his face that was there the entire flight, MS-3. And MS-4, Julie Payette, one of her duties was photo TV ops, and here she is setting up a camera. Uh, last not least, Valery Tokarev, MS-5, is preparing some food at the galley in the mid-deck. After we got to orbit, we started in on a very busy flight plan on the second day. Uh, we were checking out some of the EVA equipment. Here you see us in the mid-deck. There's Dan and Tammy checking out the cameras that they'll use outside during their spacewalk. Later in the day, Julie and I were up on the flight deck uh, powering up the robot arm for the first time and getting it ready to support the spacewalk the next day. Here you can see part of the boom of the robot arm and the camera on the end, and then a view of the shuttle itself from the end effector camera. Here's an animation of our rendezvous profile. You can see we came up from the bottom and then did a one-half revolution fly around and did the final approach from the top of the station. Here's a view of the station from a camera in the payload bay. Of course, a rendezvous takes more than one person, and the commander is actually flying the rendezvous, but also some of the other crew members are supporting. And there were several of us up on the flight deck uh, looking at various navigation systems, operating a laser ranging device, and in general supporting the rendezvous. You can see some other shots of the station as we're doing that one half revolution fly around and uh, some of the other rendezvous team in the cockpit uh, during the rendezvous. And here's uh, Kent at the aft station flying the rendezvous. He can actually see the station by looking out overhead. Here's a view of it uh, during the night as we're getting closer. And uh, finally, as it's coming down during the last part of the rendezvous and just really moments before the first ever docking with the International Space Station. On the left, you see here the target that you use to actually fly the last part of the approach, and on the right, the final docking. And a very happy uh, commander after a flawless rendezvous, and the rest of the crew is actually ecstatic, too. And there's a view of the station out the aft window. And even though we've docked, we're not quite done yet. Tammy's operating the docking mechanism, and it takes several minutes after the initial contact before the um, final docking is complete and view the station from the aft of the payload bay. Well, the day after docking, on flight day four, we prepared for the EVA. And um, here you see Dan and I getting in our spacesuits with the help of Julie and Rick. We're in the airlock now. Dan is testing his visor. Once we're suited up and the suits are checked out, Julie, who's our IV crew member, who actually does the choreography of the spacewalk from inside the space shuttle, will exit the airlock. We depressurize the airlock. And then Dan and I, Dan and I came out the hatch. Um, I was the first person out, and I will hook my safety tether to the robot arm. Dan is uh, 
out shortly thereafter and he will hook his tether to a slide wire on the node and then we'll prepare um, to do transfer operations from the space station, um, excuse me, on the space station. I'm catching a ride on the robot arm. Dan actually scaled the node and we met up there in preparation for one of our first tasks which was to install a foot restraint and a tool stanchion on the robot arm. By actuating a pedal um, one can spin uh, rather conveniently on that robot arm. Again, the goal of the flight from an EVA perspective was to transfer tools from the Space Shuttle's cargo bay to the International Space Station. After Dan and I remove the crane, we do the transfer via the robot arm of the USA crane to the space station. And after we do these installations, we do a lot of photo documentation. Once we transferred the U.S. crane, it's time to move on to the Russian crane. The first two pieces we took up on STS-96, and we had to unbolt those pieces from the carrier and uh, put them together and then transfer them to the space station. Here you can see uh, crew members playing with the helmet lights. We found that we needed a, a little bit uh, longer wrench so we've attached a cheater bar to a ratchet wrench and Dan is untorquing one of the bolts on the space station, excuse me, on the Strela. Once we're unbolted, we rotate the Strela to an upright position. Uh, Ellen Ochoa is flying the robot arm and you can see she is uh, moving me very conveniently in an arc so that I can facilitate elevating the Strela to the upright position, detaching it, and then she'll fly me over to the space station Dan will meet me there and we will jointly install the Strela onto the space station. The arm is a very convenient way to translate from one place to another and you can see that both Dan and I are hitching a ride and again Julie is inside choreographing the spacewalk with Rick's help and Ellen is flying the robot arm and we are in constant communication through the whole EVA. Once the transfers are complete we had to remove the tool stanchion and the foot restraints from the arm and uh, put the arm away and get ready for our next activity on flight day five, which was the ingress into the International Space Station. Valeria and I had the privilege of being the first in, but the rest of the crew was uh, very soon to follow as we got our first uh, look at the magnificent station in orbit. Here Valeria and I are discussing some of the procedures. We set up a series of fans to um, keep the humidity low on the station. Now that we're inside the station, uh, basically it's a brand new house. We're going to outfit it and we're also going to do some repairs on it. Here you can see Julie and Valeri fixing some of the battery chargers that had malfunctioned before we got there. And Rick and I in this view are changing out some of the communication components that had failed. There's Rommel uh, floating through the, uh, the node up into the Russian module to install some mufflers to reduce some of the noise from the fans and the flow of air. This is Rick fixing one of the hatches. So just like any new house, the doors uh, stick a little bit and needed some repair. On the space station, recycling air and water and keeping contaminants out is going to be a very important process. And this is Ellen taking one of the cartridges that collects some of the contaminants uh, to put in place. And here she is working on a recycling water experiment for future use. Julie got a chance to fly the robot arm uh, as well as Ellen. This is a survey of the outside of the space station that she did uh, to uh, verify the placement of various objects and targets out there. As we transferred items from the space hab into the space station, we had a series of tunnels to fly through. And here's a, a view of the transfer astronaut's job as I carry a, a bag from space hab up into the node. When I need some help, I can just reach out of the air and grab my friend Rick. Back in Zarya, the Russian module, you see the crew starting to attach the bags that we brought up onto the walls and behind the panels. It's wall-to-wall -wall Velcro back here, and Julie is attaching one of the uh, equipment bags to the wall with a piece of Velcro. We are a space station construction crew, so we brought our signs with us to show the world what our job was up there. Uh, 
Tammy Jernigan is teaching us here how fluids behave in space. And you can see our juice ball experiment, but we got thirsty, so we decided to just drink the experiment right out of the air. When you fly in space, uh, there's always a chance to, to relax and have a meal at the end of the day. And this is the way we prepare our food. You can uh, see our galley there. You take the food that you bring up dried, fill it with water from the galley, and then you're able to, uh, to eat it as a regular meal. That was macaroni and cheese, one of Ellen Ochoa's favorites. This is Valeri uh, having a drink. I think that's juice that he's drinking uh, in the mid-deck. Tumbling is, is an important activity for resetting your, uh, your gyros for coming home, and we enjoyed doing it too. And as you can see, we got better and better as we did it more and more. And there's Rick going like a flash. The node is so big that you can float in the middle of it and not be able to touch a wall. And here you can see back in Space Hab, we even brought a space ballerina with us. Flying from one place to another is, is a skill that you develop over the course of a day or two. You can see Ellen and Valeri uh, having a chance to fly through some of the tunnels that lead into the node. And each evening, it was nice to check mail from home. We have email on board, and we can uh, check and see what our families are doing. Unfortunately, after five days of transfer operation, we had to close down the space station and prepare it for undocking, leaving it all clean for the next crew to visit. Once we undocked, we did a maneuver called a fly-around, by which we did two full revolutions around the space station in order to photograph it and to be able to bring back the necessary doc documents for other crews to be trained. The undocking, just like the docking, is a very critical operation. It's very complex and very tricky. And this time, the, do the undocking was flown by the pilot that we see here at the aft station at the controls of the space shuttle. The views were magnificent, uh, and uh, just in case uh, I didn't remember, then the pilot told me what a circle looks like. But the view was indeed fascinating because as we went around, sometimes the Earth was above, sometimes it was below. But eventually it all came to an end, and we did a last burn of our thrusters and said goodbye to the station until the next crew will come and visit. The views from the Earth are magnificent. Here we see the Great Lakes as we fly by at an extraordinary speed of 17,500 miles per hour. We could even see cities during the night. Here is Houston at night. It is amazing to be able to float to a window and see several countries at the same time, sometimes like this picture from Italy all the way to Turkey in one glance, and to see some phenomenon that are very rarely witnessed by human. Phenomenon like this one, the northern or southern lights, aurora australis, that are over the continent of Antarctica and are rarely seen by humans. Finally, but not lastly, at the end of the mission, we deployed a small educational satellite called Starshine, made of about 900 little mirrors that catch the sunlight and reflect them back on Earth allowing students to track it and calculate orbital parameter right there on the ground and then define what moving satellite is all about. Once we had completed the deploy of Starshine, we had to get the orbiter ready to come back and fly in the atmosphere. So we did checks of our reaction control jets and also had to get things stowed inside the cabin. Here we are in space hab, reinstalling some of the rack front covers. And then here's Valeri on the mid-deck getting the seats installed for when we'd be coming in to land the next day. During the re-entry, the view out the window is just fantastic. It, it was uh, amazing to see the glow out the overhead windows. And here, if we look over uh, the commander's uh, shoulder out his windows, the different color that you see is uh, pink and orange and yellow. We made our landing at Kennedy Space Center at night and this is what the uh, views were from some infrared cameras that were tracking us as we came around to line up with the runway, as you see out uh, in front of the orbiter. You still see the nose cone glowing from the heat that it's absorbed during the entry. We get the gear down at about 300 feet above the ground and then shallow out our descent to come in and touch down at about 200 knots. And we made uh, a very smooth as silk landing as we touch down here on the runway. And then as we roll out, we deploy a drag chute to help us slow down and uh, come to a stop. We lowered the nose to the runway and then 
get lined up with the center line as you see the lights here in the video and uh, jettison the drag chute and, and then uh, eventually use the, the wheel brakes to come to a complete stop. We had a fantastic mission. Our crew motto during our, our training was if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. And you can tell by the smiles on all our faces that we had a lot of fun on this mission and uh, had a great time.